Hello, good morning, class five. Uh, uh, once again, I'm back here to take your class. Uh, previously, we were dealing with our health, right? And we were talking about we have to eat good food, we have to do exercise. Uh, basically, I told you to do three things. No, we have to do three things. We have to eat well, we have to sleep well, and we have to work well, right? Without eating, we can't work. And if we do not work, we can't sleep well. Okay? We have to have a sound sleep, nice sleep. And we have to work hard. Physical work and mental work, both. We have to work hard. And we have to eat good food. If we are able to do all these three things, then we can say that we are going ahead where we are supposed to go. And we are doing well. We can say that we are doing well. Right. Now today we begin a new chapter. Right. I have already written the, written the title of the chapter. Title of the chapter is Some Unforgettable People. People to whom we can't forget. We cannot forget some people of our country and from the world. Few people we can't forget. History will not forget. The world will not forget, the historians will not forget, the entire universe will not forget. Right? So, this is the topic, the second topic that we are dealing with, apart from, and this topic is especially a little bit we are touching the history. Right? I, I was telling you last time, no? The particular this subject is social studies. This, this, this subject, this book will touch everything, aspects of, 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 our, of our life. Right, history it will touch, it will touch our social life, it will touch geography. Right, we studied about Greenland, how cold uh, is it, it is, and we studied about uh, you know African countries. Right, how hot it is, deserts, how hot it is, and again we studied about our health, what kind of food we have to eat, and today we are discussing about unforgettable people. These unforgettable people are historical figures. History, history has remembered these people, okay? And the first person that I have written here is Mahatma Gandhi, the famous person. We call it Bapu or we call it Mahatma or, you know, we call it our father of nation, okay? He has got plenty of titles given by different historians and different, given by different people, but he's a great man to whom? History or we Indians, we can't forget. We can't forget this person and his name is Mahatma Gandhi. First, I, I'd like to talk about, I'll teach you a little bit about Mahatma Gandhi, the name itself. Okay, Mahatma Gandhi. Is it his real name? No, his, this is not his real name. Mahatma is a name given by given by someone else this name is not his birth name or the no uh, not his real name his real name is written here the first line only mohandas karamchand gandhi okay mohandas karamchand gandhi is his real name you remember this his real name and mahatma is a title given to him like if you if you do, if you study PhD, you will be given the title doctor. So this is the title. Likewise, this is the title given to Mahatma Gandhi. Okay, given to uh, Mohandas Karamchandra Gandhi. Okay, Mahatma. He is not. He is not a simple man, but he is Mahatma. Atma, you know what is Atma? So, no. Paramatma, you know what is Paramatma? Paramatma is God. So, Atma, we have all human beings, we have Atma. Paramatma is God who has created all this Atma. And Mahatma is in between, who is little higher than common human being. All of us, we have got Atma, but little greater than that Atma is Mahatma. Paramatma is God, is a creator. So he's a little bigger or little elite or little 
higher than like you and me, simple people, common people, right? So he's therefore the title is Mahatma Gandhi. Mondas Karamchandra Gandhi is not a simple Mondas Karamchandra Gandhi. He's not a simple man. He is a little bit bigger or greater or higher than all of us. So Mahatma. All right. Paramatma, Mahatma, and Atma. Three layers, no? Right. So this title is given by Rabindranath Tagore. Okay. Spell. I mean that you remember this name also. Who is Rabindranath Tagore? He was the first Indian to receive Nobel Prize in Literature. He wrote Gitanjali. He is Rabindranath Tagore. Okay. He's from Bengal. Right. Okay. Anyways. So Mahatma Gandhi is not his real name. Mahatma is not his real name. Real name is Mondas Paramjan Gandhi. Okay. Right. Another question I'll ask you. What do we celebrate on 2nd of August? I'm sorry. 2nd of October? Mahatma Gandhi's birthday, Gandhi Jayanti we call it, no? So, Mahatma Gandhi was born on 2nd of October and the year is 1869, right? I have written the, uh, uh, the real name of Mahatma Gandhi, Mondas Karamchand Gandhi. He was born in 1869 on 2nd October, okay? Then he studied in India and he went to, <coughs> went to, uh, you know, Britain to study and there he studied law. Then after studying, he went to South Africa. South Africa is a country, right? Okay. So he went to South Africa because he wanted to help people of South Africa because they were suffering. In South Africa, you know, there was a lot of discrimination. You are rich. You are poor. Poor should not go to the good restaurant. They, they, they should not be with the good people. Poor has to be, poorer, poor people or the Dalit has to be. They should not be with other people. So there were a lot of discrimination. Poor people and the Dalit people, low caste people were suppressed. There were a lot of slavery there. Slave means, what is the condition of slave? You know, they will not have their own house. They will not have their puja place to worship their own god and they will not have their king or queen or government. They don't have. They don't have they have nothing. They are they have to live in the mercy of their masters. Master will say, get up, he has to get up, work that, he has to work or she has to work that. You clean this, he or she has to clean that. You don't eat, they should not eat. That is the life of a slave. That is the pattern of being of slavery. Right, so therefore he felt very bad, so he went to South Africa and he started a movement. And that movement is called non-cooperation movement. I hope I have written here. See, I have written non sorry, 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 non -co not non-cooperation. Non-violence. Okay, not non-cooperation, right? Non-violence movement. Non-violence means violence means to kill and to be killed and to you know physically to attack people that is violence with guns and with uh, you know weapons that is violence being violent right so he is just opposite to that he did not do that he was not in favor of violence therefore non-violence without violence we have to seek for our right we have to fight for our right so he started in South Africa and it was very, very successful. Many people supported him, right? He was very happy. So he came back to India because Indian people also was, we were suffering. We were under British. British people were, British people, people were, you know, dominating us and we were suffering. We had to work. We were paid less, right? And our, all our raw materials, all good, good things were taken to Britain. And we were left with nothing and uh, we were made to work day and night, we were paid very less, all those kind of sufferings were there in India because British were, B Britishers were ruling us. So therefore Mahatma Gandhi came back and in India also he started non-violence movement 
which is also called Satyagraha. Okay, Satyagraha. Another name of non-violence is Satyagraha. Non-violence is without killing, we will start movement. Okay, we will start, we will start our revolution or we will start fighting. Okay, without using guns and without using, you know, weapons. Okay, that is non-violence. Non-violence was started by Mahatma Gandhi in South Africa and same movement was brought into India in order to fight against Britishers to gain our independence. Uh, when were we freed from the hands of the British? When? 1947, 15th August. Recently we celebrated 15th August, no? So he was the one to chased out, he was the one of the most greatest and effective leaders to chase out Britishers from India. Okay, and another uh, thing I would like to tell you is non-cooperation movement in 1920. What he did was, non-violence means without killing or without using guns, without using weapons, we have to fight against Britishers. So it was very difficult, okay, but we did it. We started uh, shouting, uh, we came to, on the road and, uh, you know, we said, uh, go back Britishers, go back Britishers, give us freedom, give us freedom. They started shooting and they started killing, but uh, even though Gandhiji uh, appealed people, uh, asked people not to fight back, not to use, you know, guns, not to use, uh, you know, the weapons. Some uh, group, different, there are different groups who are, uh, you know, there to use guns and uh, you know, fight back like Britishers were killing and they also, you know, uh, started using weapons and killed many Britishers and armies, you know, that also was there, one group, but the group with Mahatma Gandhi, they were asked not to use violent method to chase out British, okay. Another movement he started was non-cooperation movement. What is non-cooperation movement? Sometimes I write a uh, message to the parents and to you, to children, you and, uh, and uh, teachers, no. I write, dear teachers, kindly cooperate with me in order to conduct sports day 2021. Like that I write, no. Cooperate means to help or to be with me. Please be with me in order to conduct my conduct our sports day. Please help me. Cooperate with me. Okay. Non-cooperate means, non-cooperation means not to help, not to be with you or not to be with that person. So, means not to cooperate. None, not to cooperate with Britishers in every field. Britishers, no, Britishers had hired um, uh, had employed Indian people to drive car, wash their dishes, clean rooms, okay, and make, uh, to make uh, roads and to uh, and to work in the factories and make clothes, make shoes, make their coat tie, everything. No, Indians were employed because in, uh, Indians were very poor, so they had to pay very less to these poor people. If they had to employ Britishers, they had to pay very huge amount of money, I mean the salary would have been high for them. So, in order to pay less, Indian people were employed and they know. But what Gandhiji did was, he asked all these people to not to work. Non-cooperation, will not cooperate. So that is a movement, okay? And it was very effective. British, they were paralyzed. Suppose, if you, when you get up and if, uh, if your people, those who do not cook for you, and if you do not know how to drive and your driver doesn't take you to the office to work, you become paralyzed, no? Paralyzed in a sense, you, you, you are helpless, no? So Britishers were made like that. It was very effective. So Britishers, they ran away in the year 1947, leaving India. So therefore, on 15th August 1947, we said, we are independent. We gain our independence. We are free now, like that we said. No. So, non-cooperation movement was started in 1920. Uh, 
so when 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 forty seven we gained our independence. Okay, regarding Mahatma Gandhi, you remember that much. Okay, and one more, I will I will I will tell you. This I have written my experiment with truth. My experiment with truth. This is the book written by Mahatma Gandhi. And my experiment, my is who is this my? He is himself. This is my is Mahatma Gandhi. My experiment with truth. So therefore, this book is about himself. He has written for himself about himself. Okay, so therefore, this book is called Auto Bio Biography. Auto Biography. Okay, there is Auto Biography, the book which is written by himself about himself. That is Auto Biography. And you know what is biography? Biography means somebody has written, uh, somebody will write for somebody else. Suppose about Mahatma Gandhi, if Rabindranath Tagore, if he writes about Mahatma Gandhi, his, about his life, how, wh where was he born, what he used to do wh when, his, when he was a child, when did he study, what other things did he do in his lifetime. So if, if uh, Rabindranath Tagore, if he writes, then that, this book will not be called autobiography. This book will be called only biography because it is written by not Mahatma Gandhi, but Ravindranath Tagore. Okay, this is the difference between biography and autobiography. But remember the name of the book written by Mahatma Gandhi himself. Well, if I ask you, what is the name of the autobiography of Mahatma Gandhi? Autobiography of Mahatma Gandhi, the name of the autobiography of Mahatma Gandhi is My Experiment with Truth. Right? Okay, so this is about Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma, I told you what is Mahatma, Paramatma and Atma. And I told you who is, why he is called Mahatma Gandhi and who gave this title first, Rabindranath Tagore. And his real name, his birth, what is apartheid uh, movement, what is non-violence, what is Satyagraha and what is non-cooperation movement in 1920. I told you all this. This is history, children. Okay. Last time we were talking about geography and earlier we were talking about again. Uh, you know, social science and now we are talking about history. Okay? History, Mahatma Gandhi. Important, unforgettable people. Second is Abraham Lincoln. A, B, R, A, H, A and Abraham Lincoln. L, I, N, C, O, L and Lincoln. Who is he? Sixteenth president of USA. What's the difference between USA and uh, America? Uh, what's the difference? They are same. Okay. USA, America, same. Capital city of USA? Washington, no? Or you know, all this. Okay. So Abraham Lincoln was a person who made a lot of changes a lot of historical uh, you know created a lot of historical events in america all right he was the 16th president of united states of america the full form of usa united states of america okay and we in short we call it america also right okay all right so the main the the achievement as a president is he removed slavery from USA. What's hap what was happening in USA? You know, even in the USA also there were black people and white people. You no, know, these days, uh, last time we witnessed uh, Olympic. You no, know, in Olympic there were a lot of black people from America, and they are very good in sports. They are very good in athletic. So, so they won so many medals, no, you yes, see. So there are black people. Now, right now they are they are okay. But earlier, you know, white people, you know, white Americans were dominating them. They were they were slaves, as I told you in South Africa. No, these black peoples were considered as a 
you know they were they were less than or the less privileged uh, privileged people than uh, white people white people were used, supposed to be very you know wealthy and very you know good and very handsome you know they consider that's a very you know above those black people you no know, that was the condition and there were a lot of slaves slaves i told you the condition of slaves and they will they will have no rights to do anything by themselves they had to live their life with the dictates of the their masters usually white people so that was the problem in uh, uh, united states of america so there were a lot of problem there were american civil war okay it is it is there in your book kindly read american civil war was there you no know, in that war there were fight between the north america and south america and uh, there were fight between the uh, this uh, black people and white people many people were supporting uh, black people because they said all humans are same we have to consider ourselves one another we are brothers sisters we are same many people uh, many many people supported that no we are not same black people are Uh, lower than white people white people has to be superior people like that a no? lot of conflicts